Mic check, one, two. Mic check, one, two, three. We'll get started in about five minutes. Mic check, one, two, three. I think we got a couple of seats down here, y'all. Not many, but there's a few left up front.
Ten seconds. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the political forum here at the church at 117, hosted by Thunder Radio. I am Josh Peterson. Rob Clutter will be with us tonight helping moderate, and we thank everybody for coming out. And a big thank you to Steve West and the church at 117 for being gracious hosts and great sound engineers to make sure everything's up and ready to go for us tonight. Real quick, I'm going to go through a few rules and uh, procedures. We're going to have a few different groups here tonight. Uh, The first group up is going to be candidates for road superintendent. We're not doing question and answer with them. We're going to give them each four minutes of open microphone time. They can do with what they want. Um, We'll take a quick break. After that, we'll have candidates for county mayor. We've had several questions submitted to us for that uh, that we'll go through from about 612 to 640 or so. After that, we'll have candidates for county clerk. We'll operate that kind of the same way we did the road superintendent. We'll let them have four minutes of open microphone time to do with what they want. We'll do candidates for Coffee County Sheriff after that, and then we will do candidates for Manchester Alderman after that. For the the debate style ones that we'll have with mayor and sheriff we'll go ahead and go over a few of the rules here the questions have been submitted to us we'll flip a coin for who goes first and second and then we'll alternate after that everybody will have two minutes for opening statements in those and then uh, we will have time for rebuttals if that's needed and then at the end we'll have one or two minutes for closing statements depending on time depending how things flow for us tonight so we want to keep it on schedule best we can so i think that kind of covers most of our rules at the end of two minutes we've got a cowbell up here they'll hear that they hear that they're out of time they need to wrap up their thought and then uh, we'll be done it's fancy all right um rob's going to introduce our first set of folks and we're going to get underway I'd also like to welcome everybody this evening. We appreciate you being here with us or watching on Facebook or, of course, tuned in on Thunder Radio. We'd like to call our uh, first candidates for uh, road superintendent. Uh, We have Mr. Benton Bartlett and Ronnie Watts. If y'all could make your way up here to the front. Yes. May y'all just go ahead and... You can sit in one. Okay, I got you. All right, Ronnie. uh, We're going to let you go first this evening, and you have four minutes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you, Alpha County. I want to thank uh, Thunder Radio and uh, having us here tonight and my family and friends. And uh, I'm Ronnie Watts. I'm running for road superintendent, and I have 40-plus years' experience. I am the former assistant road superintendent from 2010 to 14. Uh, If I'm elected... We, I will have an assistant will have, will have at least 25 or 30 years experience to help me out a little bit. And I have ran my own business for about 15 years and it's been successful. I can do the budget at this office. I know how to do the, to purchase equipment and maintain it. If elected, you will see better and safer roads. For the first year, you will see a tremendous change in these roads. Bush hogging. I'll have eight tractors out there instead of six. Ditching, you'll see more and better ditching. This is my important, this is important the ditching is. State aid money, I will get as much as possible wherever is is available. Uh, Curves, all curves will be safened up with the correct signs. Striping, I'll get all the roads striped, which is very important on a dark, rainy night. That's, That's important, stripes. Bridges, well, I'll get them inspected, repaired, according to the budget, and I'll try to get grant money on that. Guardrails, replaced and repaired. 
shoulder stone put down. This is a very important to have on the road. This will help prevent overcorrecting and might save someone's life. Low hanging limbs, I will get them cut back. Hydroplaning, clip the shoulders back, keep the water from standing on the road. That could save somebody's life also. And I'm going to use inmates. Uh, whoever the sheriff may be, I'm sure they'll let me use inmates, which that's free labor. Uh, and that might give somebody a start when they get out of jail, you know, to, to get a better job and, do, and not go back to jail. Paving, I will put down as much hot mix as possible with the highway department's equipment. And I will still try to get as much state-aided money as I can. And I will be a working superintendent. You might see me in a dump truck. You might see me in a ditch putting in a tile, having the guys cut trees out of the road from a storm, whatever. At last but least, the office will be open five days a week instead of four. And if I'm elected, you will be greeted with a handshake and be treated with respect and dignity. I promise I will work hard at this job and I humble ask you for your vote and your support. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Ronnie. Appreciate it. Benton, if we could get you to come up. Did I get up? Yeah. yeah, you're good. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. All right, sir, you can start whenever you're ready. I'm Benton Bartlett. I'm your current Coffee County Road Superintendent. Uh, I would like to thank Josh Peterson and the folks with Thunder Radio for hosting this forum and Steve West and his staff for having us here. As most of you know, early voting starts tomorrow and in three weeks we'll have our general election. I would like to take this time to tell everyone how much I appreciate appreciate the support that you've been sh that I've been shown and I would appreciate your support and vote during the early voting and general election if you can get out there and exercise your right to vote I started in this office in 2014 and I've been in this office for seven and a half years from the very beginning it's been my goal to make the best highway department possible during my time, we've settled all the debt the highway department had, and I'm happy to say the highway department is debt free. Every item we've purchased in the last seven and a half years, we have had the money up front to pay for that equipment. We do rent equipment occasionally, but there are no rent to own items or lease items in our fleet. We've updated our mowing fleet. We've gone from two mowing crews to three. And we've recently purchased a new tractor. That machine can mow from the shoulder of the road out to 30 feet. With that range of motion, that tractor can mow every part of the ditch, which gives it the ability to run on its own. So in fact, we can uh, possibly use this tractor as a fourth mowing crew. We've added a dual slope laser to our ditching department. Uh, in our longer ditching job, there's a lot of flat land in Coffee County, as many of you may know. And that gives us the exact grade on the ditch, and it's much more accurate. We've added a chip machine to our paving fleet. It can latch on to a loaded truck pull it along behind as it spreads small gravel in our chip seal roads. There's a new oil distributor that sprays oil for the chip roads. And we're using a different oil this year, which promises to retain more gravel that we put down. And we've tweaked our cold mix design. All this means that we can now pave at a higher quality jobs faster than it has ever been done at this highway department. The thing I want the voters to know is that every year I've been in office, there have been improvements made to the services we do. And there's enough surplus in our funds in the highway department now that can take care of most any emergency. 
I try not to promise anyone anything, but I can tell you without question that I will continue to try to make Coffee County Highway Department the best it can be. Once again, I'm Benton Bartlett. I'm running for re-election for Coffee County Road Superintendent, and I would appreciate your support and vote in the upcoming election. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ben. We're going to take a quick break for our folks listening in on the radio. Next, we have candidates for Coffee County Mayor. You're listening to Thunder Radio.
Welcome back to the Political Forum, live on Thunder Radio, coming to you from the church at 117, downtown Manchester. We appreciate everybody being here, tuning in, and enjoying uh, these uh, candidates who have graciously showed up this evening to tell us more about themselves. Speaking of that, we have the candidates for Coffee County Mayor on the stage, and uh, we're going to give each of you two minutes for an opening statement. Uh, we did a coin toss prior to the uh, to you coming up here and Margaret you get to go first all right well thank you Thunder Radio and Josh and Steve Mr. West uh, for providing us an opportunity to share our thoughts and visions for Coffee County today my home and my community that I dearly love and thank you Judd for your desire to put yourself out there as I'm doing to offer serve our amazing community this is a thankless job and we both know how hard that is at times, and I just appreciate anyone that's trying to serve their country. I'm Margaret Cunningham, or our county. I'm Margaret Cunningham, and I want to be your county mayor, your next one. I love Coffee County, where I've lived for more than four decades. My passion is to serve my community in ways that make a positive, qualitative difference today, as well as 30 years from now, and even longer. I am moved to run for, gov uh, for governor, not today, but mayor, uh, because I desire to see Coffee County hold on to our time-tested values um, in the midst of an expanding and diverse population. I'm, I'm thankfully, I got to raise my children here. I've worked alongside my husband in our farming business for 42 years. I've been a project manager for two different mayors in the county uh, mayor's office, and now I've been a, a commissioner from the 7th District in the rural area for the past eight years. I've been so blessed for the friends and family I've gained here. I'm a better person for having lived here. And I think many of you would say the same thing. I'm a cancer survivor. I know what it is to persevere through life's battles. And I continue to use those skills every day. Um, we each bring a different set of skills to this office. Some are good, some not so. But you know, when we combine our skills with um, the people that we're working with, our ideal would be that we could have a better community. And just because we're different doesn't mean that either one of us is better than the other. I have the experience that counts in the mayor's office. I think that's important. But we're all seeing a destructive nature in our country, sometimes in our, our, our own community. And it reminds me of how, how important it is not to take the bait of people who are vicious or mean or try to act in such ways that's not conducive to our community. It's better that we work together because dividing we do fall. And when industries are looking in our community, they look at Facebook posts and things like that and how people are uh, being. But I appreciate your vote uh, and I would uh, humbly ask for your vote tonight and thank you for considering me for county mayor. Thank you. That's Margaret Cunningham. Our other candidate that we have with us this evening is Judd Matheny. Uh, Judd, you have your two minutes for your opening statement. Thank you, sir, and uh, thank you, Thunder, and thank you, Margaret, for the kind words and back at you. I appreciate your service to our county you're running also. And, uh, guys, I want to bring my experience to work for you. Uh, I grew up in this community. With, when I was a teenager, I spent a couple of my years in West Africa growing up. When I came back, I realized just how great we have it. And I kind of had reverse culture shock. And I've been on a public service path since then. That includes a military veteran, law enforcement veteran, business owner. Um, have been your state representative for 16 years here, reelected seven times. I've served on every committee in the House. Speaker pro tem for two years. I had at-large voting rights uh, on all committees. The laws that we live by here, the laws that govern our county, the laws that the county uh, has to interpret uh, through attorney general's opinions and through the actual statutes and legislative intent. Guys, I helped write those, I updated them. I know how county government operates. Uh, I was co-chair of state and local government for years. I understand what has to be done. I understand the growth that's coming our way and I understand how to put people and ideas together and make things happen. And I have contacts on a deep level, not here, 
only here but also on the state and the federal level, and those will bring to bear as Manchester continues to grow and we strike that balance between the things we hold dear and we want to preserve and those things that we have to take advantage of because we'll never get another opportunity again. So I would like an opportunity to serve you as your mayor, make the best of the county commission that we have and empower them the best I can and do the best job I can for you. Thank you. Thank you, that was Judd Matheny, candidate for Coffee County Mayor. Uh, we had questions submitted to us by our listening audience. Uh, we're going to uh, do the questions. After I finish the question, you will have two minutes to answer the question and a rebuttal if necessary. Judd, we'll start with you on the first question and then Margaret, you'll have the same question, um, but I'll read it again because I won't remember it. Okay. Uh, how do you propose the county move forward with the animal control situation? Studies and committees have led to a proposed location near the Coffee County Jail, but that has recently come under fire. Funds were approved this week, but without a site, putting you on a timeline to complete the process. Ultimately, this has been a years-long process. What is the next move for county animal control if you had your way? Thank you, and, and this has been... Uh quite a, a feat um, in the last six or eight months. And anybody that knows me knows I was a canine officer in law enforcement, knows that I still train uh, shepherds and have two service dogs. And uh, that animals are near and dear to my heart and we will have a functional modern animal shelter, I can promise you. That's somewhere we have been uh, very derelict in this county in, in years. And I, my opponent can probably say more about this. Um, I know in 2015, uh, she issued a statement that there was, I believe, a, a piece of land available at the time, and they were ready to build one, and nothing's happened. And uh, now here at the, at the very end of this campaign and at the beginning of a new administration, I think we've made some unwise, hasty decisions on how to build one. I think we just need to step back, need to sit down with our partners in the city, the county commission. We need to look at all the county land. We need to do this thoughtfully. We need to look at what other counties have done, not only what they have now, but how they got to where they are. Uh, case in point, Franklin County has a wonderful facility, but they started in the Belvedere Livestock Barn. So sometimes you have to crawl before you can walk. So with all these things in mind, I will make sure, and I will pledge to you, that we'll have a modern functional animal facility and it'll be done as quickly as possible. And if we can use the money the county's earmarked for it, absolutely we'll use it. If we can legally use it and the commission decides in September, October, November, if they would like to use that money, then I think it's great to have seed money for that. If not, we'll start from scratch and we'll do it again, but we will get it done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that was Judd Matheny. Margaret uh, Cunningham, the same question is for you. Would you like me to repeat the question? I think I got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You have two minutes. All right. First, this has not been a years-long process. This has been a lifelong process. The animal control facility is such a dilapidated place. I'm embarrassed that our employees even have to go there. People who bring dogs there are appalled at how bad the situation is there. It's been being worked on, I've worked on in the last eight years to try to help raise money for that. Hasn't happened, you know, because we didn't have a site, we didn't have a plan. Everybody has a different idea. We go in different directions. No one can get on the same song sheet. We, we've been crawling along, uh, this is true, but um, for every effort that was being blown, thrown out there, someone else has thrown a wrench in it. We just need to get together. Everybody needs to uh, pull together. I understand you are thinking about maybe privatizing the animal control, I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure that's a good idea because we can see in Lincoln County uh, we've got two different uh, governments that um, are working together. You get to rebut. That's okay. Um, the, um, but uh, if private industry would take this over or a rescue or Humane Society or whoever, they still need the funding of the county. If the county's not involved, uh, it, it will fall apart because groups argue, they fight, they get mad. You can look at closed cities, closed uh, Counties, uh, Lincoln County, for instance, we have to have some consistency. The county has to be the one that uh, controls this and stays in the middle with this. But 
it, it's very important that we get, we're getting more population, more dogs. Tullahoma built their new one. They're overrunning and are already overrunning in the old one they have. And this is the county. So we have, we have huge issues. We need education for spay and neuter that would tremendously stop this problem uh, in the long run. And we could just have adequate uh, dogs and not, uh, you know, be run over by them uh, with better education process there. But um, I would like to think that all of us could go forward. And I'm glad to hear that Judd is for this. I just think it's more important that the county stay in control of it, otherwise we'll, we will be going dead in. Joe, would you like to have 30 seconds yeah, to respond? Yeah, just very quickly, I, I've never said privatize it. I have said privatize the fundraising arm of it, which we have to do. I think in order to have a good shelter, we're gonna to have to have the community involved. You're gonna to have to have some kind of uh, nonprofit and executive director and someone that visits the industrial base that we have here, especially gets pledges for money and, and raises money that way. Uh, it, it will be a county operation, don't worry about that. But uh, we do need the community to buy in fully uh, if we want to have the, the maximum of what we want. All right, thank you to both candidates. Uh, next question, Margaret, this will be for you first. Talk to us about the Wayside Acres situation from a county financial position, county responsibility and owner responsibility. Well, the Wayside Acres is a, a long problem that uh, actually when I came in as a commissioner eight years ago, we were in lots of trouble with the state because uh, they had changed the rules on uh, how people would pay for um, their sewer out there. There's 64 people on the sewer out there. Uh, we were able to put one in because there were 19 notices of violation when that started 20 years ago when we put that in. I was there on the original of it and caught all the, the complaints and things from the people out there, but we managed to put in a step system that's working very well. The state tends to change the rules from time to time and that makes us have to react. Those people out there are paying way too much money for their sewer, but there's no uh, choice about that. The state has mandated that. Uh, I'd like to see that uh, decreased once uh, we've paid the money back to the county for that because the Water Wastewater Authority owns that. They oversee it, they make the decisions on it. That authority is appointed by the county legislative body, but um, uh, it's running very well. It's a good system. We have some repairs that we need to do out in our Leachville that uh, ARP money is gonna help us with and, and combined with TDAC money. So we're being very useful of, of that money to do that. But um, uh, those citizens out there um, are struggling to pay their bills for that. I feel bad about that, but it's a public service, and, but we've done a really good job to get out of trouble with the state and, and, and go forward like we should have. Thank you, that was Margaret Cunningham, candidate for Coffee County Mayor. Um, Judd, same question for you, and I forgot to mention earlier, this, this question comes to us from Sue in Hillsborough. Would you like me to repeat that question? About the, the Wayside Acres? Yes. No, sir, I've got it. Okay, thank you. Two thank minutes. you, and, and I'm very familiar with the Wayside Acres issue. It was one of the very first issues that I took on uh, after you elected me as your state representative. And uh, bottom line is, is we had, we had some poor development out there. We had poor planning, we had poor installation, and we had poor development. We had septic tanks that failed all over the place. And the county was kind of stuck holding the bag. The state came in and helped in a, in a big way. And I was instrumental in, involved in that and involved in that step system. 14, 12 years down the road, uh, we start getting some violations. We're having some more seepages. We're having some problems. We're potentially overtaxing the step system. I brought the state in again and uh, created quite a bit of consternation, maybe with some local officials in this room. But we solved the problem. We put some so solutions out there to solve the problem. And uh, th the state has been a good partner with that step program. TDEC has been a good partner. They've, they have been uh, very open-minded about expanding the headroom of the step system in order to uh, accommodate more people. And that's always gonna be a problem area out there until at some point maybe we get a, you know, a real sewer out there. But uh, that's just, that, that's a poor neighborhood. It was built poorly and we're gonna have to suffer for it. Um, I will be uh, for, always for modernizing the STEP program and making sure the citizens out there are as least inconvenienced as possible. But we do have a, 
a fund in the rural, a rural fund in the county that could pay this debt off and alleviate some of this problem for these citizens, because it, it is somewhat of a collective problem. So that's something that also would look at. Margie, you have 30 seconds to respond. Well, I, I would uh, argue with Judd that the state has not done one single thing to help us with that. That was, has been totally uh, worked on through the uh, county efforts. The state has, all they've done is give us a hard time about it. But we've been managed to stay above that and to get on with it, to make it work and get the state off of our back. But um, the state has not done anything to help and created the problem to begin with. So that's all i got to say about that. Judd, would you like 30 seconds to respond to that? Or? No, I'm, I'm, I'm all right, we're going to move on to the next question then. <clears throat> uh, uh, Judd, this will be for you first. Bonnaroo officials have expressed disappointment and issued a strongly worded letter to the county to take issue with an event fee passed by the county commission that will place a fee on all tickets sold by the festival. The festival is demanding yearly accountability of that revenue each year and cites state law that says that those funds must be used for purposes related to the entertainment event. How would you respond to the festival if you were speaking to them directly right now and how should the county use this money if it is supposed to go to purposes related to the event? You have two minutes. Thank you. Well, obviously, if the money by statute has to go to purposes related to the event, then it has to. Um, Bonnaroo has been a great partner. Uh, for those of you that don't know a lot about my background, I've got a, a rich background in uh, event security, high-end security. I used to do the security for the Titans in Adelphia Coliseum and the Predators and Gaylord Entertainment Center at the time. I know about concert and I did the concerts there I did George Strait Music Fest I know about the risks that promoters take in very volatile environments with the economy with with the sicknesses like COVID and in various communities especially a company like Live Nation that has a thousand different events every year they're going to always we're, they're corporate now they're going to look at the bottom line how much is this costing us what kind of grief are we getting is the lifespan of this festival going to be worth a continued investment? And I don't think the county accurately looked at those things long term and communicated those concerns with Bonnaroo. Bonnaroo looked for a safe partner and therefore partnered with the city of Manchester. When the county passed this ticket tax, I think Bonnaroo said, you know what, we've always paid the bills you've asked us to pay. We've also always donated an extraordinary amount to your community. Um, but if you're insistent that this $5 will be taxed, then the first 500000 or $400,000, whatever that ticket tax is, that is raised will go, needs to go directly to offset the cost associated with this festival. We will no longer look at those as our responsibility. They'll be your responsibility now. And then that cuts into their ability to give in other uh, areas. It also cuts into the good faith of the negotiations. So I would let the people at Bonnaroo know, and they already know this actually because I've met with them for many, many times. They have a friendly ear. They will be treated as fairly as any other businesses community. If they have very unique problems, we will solve those problems. We won't penalize them for them. And I would do that with any other business and any other entity that wanted to domicile here or work here. Thanks. Thank you. That's Judd Matheny. Uh, Margaret, would you like me to repeat that question? or If you would. I will. Bonnaroo officials have expressed disappointment and issued a strongly worded letter to the county to take issue with an event fee that was passed by the county commission that will place a fee on all tickets sold by the festival. The festival is demanding yearly accountability of that revenue each year and cites state law that says that those funds must be used for purposes related to the entertainment event. How would you respond to the festival if you were speaking them, to them directly right now? And how should the county use this money if it is supposed to go to purposes related to the event? Well, first, um, this is not a tax, it's a fee. It's not a tax on the, uh, on the uh, attendance there, it's a fee. The fee goes for, to help with the services that the county provides. Even though Bonnaroo has been annexed into the city, there are still services that county has to provide, ambulance, Sheriff's Department still, there are, there are services that we have to do out there. I'm not even sure the fee that we are charging will be sufficient to cover that. But having said that, you know, Bonnaroo was here for, has been here 20 years, been in the county uh, up until the last three years or two. Um, we were a good partner with Bonnaroo. We did well. 
you know, and we worked with them. They communicated with us. We communicated with them. But the communication broke down once Live Nation came in. It was, they changed their PR people. They had young people that did not know how to communicate with the community. They would show up for meetings, even uh, when our state legislator, Rush Bricken, was in charge of our finance committee there. We'd have, we'd have meetings. They just wouldn't show up. But then they want to blame the county for no communication. It, you know, communication is a two-way street. It always is. Um, I'm sorry that there's been so much disillusion in the last few years about that, but I think uh, people aren't willing to communicate. We've lost our communication between uh, a larger industry like uh, Live Nation buying it and some of our local officials have not done a very good job of communicating. Whether or not, uh, you know, we would have passed this fee or not, we still have to work together and that's very important. There are, they've been a great partner. We've been a great partner with them, but uh, we've gotten a bad name here uh, recently in the last couple of years, but you have to do what you have to do. Government is government and, and um, so, but I want to work very closely with Bonnery. We have to do that um, because it's a good business and we need to work together. All right, thank you. That's Margaret Cunningham. Next question, Margaret, you'll go first on this one. Chris in Manchester uh, submitted this question, and it's a follow-up regarding Bonnaroo. He says that the festival organizer, Live Nation, has pledged 500000 to Planned Parenthood. How does this align with your conservative values, being that they produce the festival in our county? Well, Bonnaroo donates to a lot of organizations. I'm not aware of the donation to Planned Parenthood. That's their decision, just like any other industry. They, they can determine who they want to uh, contribute their money to. Actually, that's not the county's business to tell them who they need to contribute to or not. So uh, I am a conservative, but you know, as far as telling an industry who they can donate to and who they can, I, I don't think that's in my uh, line of uh, answering. So uh, I would have no comment about that because that's their business and we're just a county government. We don't control things like Planned Parenthood and abortion and those kind of things. That's out of our league and thankfully we don't have to do that here. We're just managing county government, period. Thank you. That's Margaret Cunningham. Uh, Judd, would you like me to repeat the question? No, I, I've got it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it, it's always disappointing when, uh, to me, when somebody gives uh, supports an organization like what most Planned Parenthood stands for. I've seen some insidious things from them. I do think my opponent nailed it, though, when she said that this is a more of a government management issue. We're not in the business of uh, telling a private business what they can or can't do here. Now, you can vote that with your dollar. As an individual ticket holder, you can vote that with your opinion um, and, uh, and let them know in the future. And that's, that's the way you hurt corporations that have gone woke is you hurt them in the pocketbook. And you've got to be able to do that. You've got to be willing to do that. Um, Bonnaroo also brings a lot of other things that some of our citizens probably have some discomfort with. And our law enforcement's done a great job at containing that there, um, not only in planning for it, but also not letting it get out of the perimeter. And uh, I, I applaud them for that. And we've, we've got a bunch of good guys. We've got people that are, they, they understand this festival now. It's, it's, it's ingrained in, uh, in our subculture here. And it's, it's sort of like building a Navy with a big festival like this and the amount of people that it takes to pull it off. You just can't do it overnight. You have to have a huge supply of knowledge. And this county has that. And that is a good strength that we have. Um, you know, we'll let Live Nation do what they do, um, but we will hold them accountable for the activities that take place here and how they take place. Thank you, that's Judd Matheny. Uh, next question, and Judd, you will go first on this one. What do you see as the top three most pressing issues facing the county government over the next four years, and how do you propose tackling them? Thank you. Uh, probably the absolute first one's gonna be growth. Um, anybody can see the housing starts that we have, uh, where we're gonna, the growth that we've had in the last decade that uh, we have got to work very hard to get out in front of this and to, to be able to control it. 
and that, that means planning and zoning, folks working together, the city's working together, making sure that we leave areas open uh, in the future, corridors for roads and businesses, uh, more ambulance substations in other parts of the county like Hillsborough and Beach Grove that we have to have. We all know we have to have those. And uh, so the infrastructure problems that come along, or the growth problems in controlling those are a huge one. The infrastructure problems are, are number two, right along behind those. The, the water and the sewer and the delivery of those systems and uh, how we're going to uh, do uh, improvements to our electrical grid and highways and our short county or short line rail system is going to have to be improved in order to take advantage of some of these industries that are popping up now. So the infrastructure itself, making sure people have more broadband access, which uh, hopefully we're well on the way to doing that, is, is another just monster thing. And then taking care of our people and our personnel. If we continue to have high turnover rates in areas, we're losing money. We're losing intellectual value and we're marking time on our ability to be able to move forward. We've got to pay our people what they're worth and we've got to, to make sure that they're properly qualified, they have the licenses they need, the continuing education that they need, and they bring to the table the professionalism that we need from our county employees, continue to, to need from our county employees. But I would much rather pay our folks more money and have them stay here then have two or three people over a 10-year period fill that same job and just continuing to retrain everybody. So there is a balance, once again, that we can strike in, in offering our people more money uh, to be able to stay here. Thank you. Thank you, Judd. Uh, Margaret, would you like me to repeat that question? I'm good with it. Thank okay, you. thank you. Um, hard to c confine just the three problems because we do have many issues that the county is dealing with. Growth is definitely one of them. People are moving here because of our rural, rural nature. Uh, if we don't have control growth, uh, that's going to be uh, troubling for the people who moved here and the people that live here and appreciate the values of our rural environment. We need to maintain that as best we can in a controlled growth kind of way. Um, our ability to attract the Tennessee College of Applied Technology uh, campus here. We've been working on that. When I came in eight years ago, I'm, I sponsored a resolution to uh, have a campus out at the Joint Industrial Park. But, um, you know, we didn't have follow-up leadership with that to make that happen. But we're now back on the master plan list because we've had some commissioners who've worked very hard to get that back in. I'm very proud of that. and. Now uh, we're back on their main building program, so they've committed to uh, building a campus out there because we have got to train our youth for good quality jobs. People don't have to go to college to get a degree in business or psychology or something like that. They need hands-on working jobs that when they come out of this TCAT organization, they can start with fifty and $60,000 jobs and serve the community better, keep our kids at home, give our kids something to look forward to instead of just having to go to another county to work. That's very important. Um, finishing our water lines. We have people who don't have portable water or hauling water. That's so important. Uh, we were doing good with that, but the last few years with uh, money issues and things like that, changes of the state rules to, to fund that and what you have to do to stay in business as a utility has all created that, but we can fix those problems and um, there's many more I'd like to talk about. Employee issue is definitely a problem and I'm going to take just a second because I know Judd would do that too. I was an employee, then pay was a problem then uh, 15 years ago. What happens is you try to fix it and then uh, we don't move our pay scale uh, in random with, uh, with the consumer price index and inflation and things like that, we stop and then it gets stagnant again. And that's what's wrong with employee pay scale. We asked the uh, current mayor to fix that. Um, nothing was done on that, but I intend, and I hope Judd will if he ends up being mayor, um, that's a very high priority. We need to get that fixed. Thank you. Thank you for the time. All right, uh, last question, and the Time Lord over here says that we're running behind. So um, uh, I, I'm going to ask one minute on this one. And I love having a bell to stop a politician from talking. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> anyway. Okay. Um, who goes first? Margaret, you are first on this one. 
Tom in the new union community has this question. Coordination and cooperation with the county and two city governments has, awesome, has often been critiqued. The county currently has a lawsuit with the city of Manchester over annexation of Bonnaroo property. How do you propose cleaning up this long-standing issue with your style of leadership? It's not a suit because Manchester annexed the property. There was no question about that. The suit revolves around state law says that in 15, when uh, a property is annexed into a city, whatever revenue comes out of that piece of property, that the county maintains that for 15 years. That's a state law and the, we uh, pursued that as a lawsuit. It wasn't intended to sue Manchester. It's just that our attorney decided that Manchester needed to be in it. Uh, I, frankly, it's a question with the crop trailers office at the state level and a lot of politics involved in it to make it something it's not. But uh, we didn't sue the city of Manchester. We sued for the right to receive 15 years worth of tax annexation uh, for tax revenue. On that. All right, thank you. That's Margaret Cunningham, candidate for Coffee County Mayor. Uh, Judd, same question. Would you like me to repeat that? No, <clears throat> no sir, I'm fine. Thank you. And, uh, you know, cleaning this mess up, I've actually already started the process of determining and, and have ordered and am receiving all the suits that this county's involved in, you know, one way or another, whether they uh, have to do with planning or codes or whether they have to do with lawsuits in general. And I want to know, what are we gumming ourselves up with? Are there some that we need to wrap up? Are there some that we need to continue to prosecute? Are there some that are political? And I want to solve these things because they lead to disagreements, especially in local governments. When, you're, when you have a police department, a sheriff's department that could be swapping employees easily, when you have um, city and, and uh, county staff that could swap places easily, they could cannibalize on each other, when you have opportunities to have a world-class animal shelter between a city and a county, but they can't even agree about an easement across a piece of property to get to one part of it. All these things come from the fact that they're suing each other. And so I want to look at these issues very closely. I'm not Pollyanna. I grew up here. I know there's always competition between the two cities and the county itself, but I can also tell you we're going to get back to joint chamber events. I'm going to recommend that. We're going to get back to the two mayors and the county mayor participating in our parades and our events together and being seen more together. And that is one of my strong points, bringing people and ideas together to get things done. And I would like to have the opportunity to do that. Thank you. Thank you. That's Judd Matheny. Um, Closing statements. Uh, we're giving each of you one minute for a closing statement. Uh, Judd, you get to go first. I've enjoyed the campaign. I've enjoyed getting out and getting to see so many people and, uh, and learning exactly what is on your mind. And I believe that uh, you're looking at the right person to put in this job. I want to ask you for the ability to do the job. I want to bring my experience to bear for you. I want to bring my time and my energy. I'm literally, I could start this evening. I'm ready to go. And I've got a great team of people out there that are willing to help. Um, many of them are in this room now. And uh, there's an unlimited amount of people that have reached out to me wanting to serve on committees, wanting to bring their expertise into this county, that they see uh, some of the repressed opportunities that, that we've not fully committed ourselves to. And we want to open ourselves up to that. I'm the person that can make that happen. I'm not going to walk in there and start turning over desks and, and be some totally different person than, than you might have been used to. But I'm going to be a different kind of county mayor. I'm going to be somebody that's going to be hands-on right up front with you, right up front with the city leaders, and I look forward to doing a good job for you. So I appreciate your vote and would ask you to vote tomorrow, um, starting early voting July 15th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Margaret, you have one minute for your closing statement. Thank you. I'm a conservative independent asking for your vote. I'm concerned about our county. I don't have any dedication to a party. I'm not controlled by a party. I don't have to be told by a party how to vote, what to do. I look at the facts. I study things. It, it's all about the community coming together. It's not about supporting one party or the other or who's better or who's worse. It's about the quality of our people in this county to pull together to make us a better county. I, I think I have the talents to do that. I've been in county government for 15 years. 
I can hit the ground running because I know internally the problems we need to fix right away. And I know uh, countywide what we need to work on to make this county a better county as we go forward. I would humbly ask your vote. And uh, for me, I know some people don't want to vote for a woman, but I'm a very smart person and I have a lot of common sense. You will not find anybody who has a better work ethic than I do. And I will work my butt off for y'all, just as I've done as a commissioner. But uh, I would appreciate your vote and early voting. Please go out and vote. We can't complain if we, can't, if we don't vote. So please go and vote, and I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank both of our candidates for coming out tonight and spending time with us. And we're going to take a quick break for our folks on the radio station. When we come back, we'll have candidates for county clerk. You're listening to Thunder Radio.
We want to welcome you back to the Political Forum live on Thunder Radio, also on the Thunder Radio Facebook page. We appreciate everybody watching or tuning in this evening. Up next, we have the candidates for county clerk. Each candidate will have four minutes to uh, tell us all about themselves. Our first candidate up this evening is Melissa Anderson. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for choosing to be here tonight. Thank you, Thunder, for giving us this opportunity to speak with you. Um, I'm Melissa Anderson. I'm your Republican candidate for Coffee County Clerk. Growing up in Tullahoma, my parents, Tom and Nancy Northcott, instilled in me a love for this amazing community. Um, they, the importance of service and the value of strong Christian leadership, especially in our local government. A recent message from a guest pastor at our church really kind of brought this full circle for me and reminded me why we serve. Galatians 5.13 tells us that you, my brothers and sisters, were called to freedom, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. We have a blessing of great freedom in this country, and I've chosen through the years to try and use my freedom to serve um, people. After college and dental school, I joined the Indian Health Service and served the Hopi and Navajo people in Tuba City, Arizona. Um, in 2001, I came back to my hometown to serve the community um, by opening a dental practice. As my family grew, I chose to serve my family by stepping down as a practicing um, dentist to stay at home and homeschool my children. In order to continue serving my family, I returned to the health care um, field and uh, I'm now coaching and developing a team of almost 30 people. I've served on the board of Five Loaves for Kids. I serve on multiple com committees at my church, and I volunteer in our community and our schools. As my children are moving into adulthood, which still blows my mind, it's time for me to serve my community in a different way. The Coffee County Clerk's Office is a service-driven office and needs strong service-driven leadership. I'll ensure that the office remains open and sufficiently staffed, especially during those peak office hours uh, and the high traffic hours. I'll personally be available um, in person by email or by phone during business hours. I'll be present on the line doing whatever needs to be done, whatever it takes to make sure that the clerk's office consi can consistently uh, provide quality services as efficiently and effectively as possible. If one of our residents needs help um, with their new license plate, getting it on their car, I'll grab my screwdriver in hand and help them put it on. High quality customer service isn't possible without high qual highly qualified staff. The deputy clerks are the greatest asset of the clerk's office. They're the heart and soul of the clerk's office. The employee turnover rate has risen to almost 130% since 2018. Employee retention and office morale is the responsibility of the county clerk. When elected, I'll reduce the high employee turnover and increase office morale by providing clearly communicated expectations and job-specific training. Leading with integrity, consistency, compassion, and open communication. My door will always be open. I'll also create a positive and supportive environment that promotes dedication and loyalty, as well as accountability and teamwork. It's important that our deputy clerks are being compensated appropriately. This is a huge issue right now as, as cost of living is skyrocketing and it doesn't seem to be getting any better anytime soon. Um, it's important that we take care of our deputy clerks and make sure that they are being compensated and I'll continue that fight to get the pay that they deserve. The Coffee County Clerk's Office needs strong leadership to move forward and best serve the citizens of this county. I will bring my Christian, constitutional, conservative, Republican values and service-driven passion to the Office of County Clerk. I'm Melissa Northcott Anderson, and I humbly ask for your vote and look forward to the opportunity to serving this county. I remember early voting starts tomorrow. Election is August 4th. Thank you so much for your time and listening to me.
Thank you. That was Melissa Anderson, candidate for county clerk. Up next, we have Teresa McFadden, also candidate for county clerk. Teresa, you have four minutes. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. For those, my friends and family that either came or are listening. For you that may not know me, I am Teresa McFadden. I am your county clerk. I grew up on a farm in the Shady Grove community in Coffee County. I'm the youngest of five children. I have two children, John and Sarah, one very gr spoiled grandson, Bentley, and another one that should be here tonight or tomorrow since he hadn't made his appearance from last week. My parents taught me a very strong work ethic and a sense of caring for the people around me at a very young age. They taught me what responsibility is. I took those combined values with me to the clerk's office and I worked my way from deputy clerk to your county clerk. The county clerk's office has many functions. Issuing license plates is what most of you would associate with our office. However, we also collect sales tax on motor vehicles, four-wheelers, campers, boats, motors, and trailers. We issue business license. We process notary applications, order their commissions from the state, and file their bonds. We also issue marriage license. Other responsibilities are to record and maintain documents, including county commission minutes, oaths of office, and bonds, just to name a few. In addition to these functions, we keep up with the changing laws and how to apply them to our customers. This is a never-ending process and requires us to stay on top of what is changing and how it applies to the many unique situations that come in from day to day. The last two years have been extremely difficult for many businesses as well as government offices due to COVID. And in addition to the impacts of COVID, my office saw some dedicated staff retire, new staff members transfer to less challenging positions, but we still were able to meet the needs of, the, of our customers. The clerk's office was able to continue to serve the citizens of Coffee County with their drive through window, online services, in-person and phone services, as well as a kiosk in Tullahoma. My trade is serving the people of this county. Every once in a while, a candidate will run against me, make promises for lots of changes, then fade away, never to be heard from again. I'm the one that has been in this office, making those changes, serving the people, and getting the job done year after year. I'm not a hearing gone candidate. I have served for years doing the things that need to be done day in and day out. I have streamlined the office with the latest technology, including a self-service kiosk in Tullahoma at a SIN Federal Credit Union, <clears throat> and have requested three or four more. I have maintained a responsible budget and a perfect audit history during my years of service. I believe that's a pretty good record. I'm the only candidate with experience. I love what I do, and I do it well. I have prov a proven track record of dedication to this community, and I will continue to work diligently to treat everyone with the respect they deserve and provide them with the outstanding customer services that my deputies and I are known for. I am asking for your vote and support in the general election on August 4th to continue to pro provide exceptional customer services to the citizens of Coffee County. Thank you. Thank you. That was Teresa McFadden. We're going to take a quick three-minute break. Next, we'll have candidates for Coffee County Sheriff. You're listening to Thunder Radio.
happen. They're, they're coming. Welcome back to the Political Forum, live on Thunder Radio. Our next group of candidates are running for Coffee County Sheriff. We have three candidates in this race. Brandon Tomerlin, Danny Farrell, and Chad Parton. Uh, we will go in that order on the questions and in the opening statements. Each of you have two minutes for an opening statement, and Brandon, you get to go first. Hello, everyone. My name's Brandon Tomberlin. Thank you to Thunder Radio and the Church uh, 117 for hosting this event. Thank you for attending. Thank of those of you that are listening on the radio or via Facebook for listening in. I'm excited to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a father, uh, two daughters, Lauren and Braden Tomberlin. They are my pride and joy. I'm a husband to Angie Slater Tomberlin of 23 years, and she has been my rock through this endeavor. Uh, I'm a son to Tommy and Brenda Tomberlin. They, they are the hardest working, most loving parents that a child could ask for. I'm not here today to tell you why you shouldn't vote for these two men. They are, they are good men. I'm just here today to tell you why that you should vote for me. I'm an active member of New Hope Baptist Church, but I am not perfect. I am a sinner saved by grace through faith. I am thankful that God has been with me through this journey. I am a farmer in rural Coffee County. I own and operate a cow-calf operation. I have attended the University of Tennessee Master Beef Producer Program and Advanced Master Beef Producer Program. And I am on the board of directors of the Coffee County Grundy County Cattlemen's Association. I have over 20 years of law enforcement experience locally and internationally. I have extensive experience in personnel, finance and budgeting, training, logistics, operations, and management. Currently, I'm proud to serve the citizens of Manchester as the chief investigator. I will diligently work to provide this county with the best service and public safety possible. 
I have truly enjoyed all of the front porch talks, the living room, and driveway talks. I greatly appreciate all the phone calls and messages that I've received from everyone, and I respectfully ask for your vote in this general election. Thank you. Thank you, that was Brandon Tomberlin. Up next, Danny Farrell. Danny, you have two minutes. I would like to thank everybody for being here tonight, taking time away from their families and being here at this event. I would like to thank Thunder Radio, uh, my, my wife and my boys are my, my best achievement. We've been together for 23 years and I've raised three good boys. Um, uh, I know I'm not a We'll add that to your time. Just go a little closer there. <laughs> um, uh, as your sheriff, I strive to serve and protect the citizens of Coffee County, having qualified and fully staffed shifts. As a result of that, it will eliminate the SROs from having to leave the schools and children unprotected to cover other duties in the department. Uh, the deputies will be accessible to the public, quicker response times on calls, Deputies held accountable for and maintaining a high moral character and have a high visibility. Work together with all law enforcement agencies inside and outside of Coffee County for more cohesive service for all. <clears throat> have an open door policy. If I'm not there, you leave a number and I will call you back. Work with all schools, work with schools on the SRO program and be more efficient and for growth. Maintain a season, sensible budget that benefits officers as well as Coffee County citizens. Uh, I like being volunteering and having uh, arranging and participating in charity events. Uh, if all of y'all knew me, uh, there's nothing at the Sheriff's Department that I hadn't done but be Sheriff and SRO. Uh, if you follow me on Facebook, y'all all know that I love to cook. That's just something I love to do. And in the ending, I want to reestablish several connections with community churches and other organizations so we can make Coffee County the best they can be. Thank you. Thank you. That was Danny Farrell, candidate for Coffee County Sheriff. Sheriff Chad Parton, you are next. You have two minutes, sir. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Josh and Thunder Radio, for putting this on. And it's uh, really good to see this uh, house packed tonight so thank you for your interest thank you for being here I'm not gonna sound like a broken record this is my fourth debate for the year so some of us had to run through a primary and you've got to hear me twice there but I am the sheriff of Coffee County and I have been for four years we hit the ground running uh, we put the SROs in the elementary schools are we perfect no we made a lot of concessions at the sheriff's department to get those personnel into those buildings without it, any more funding or any more tax increases. Is there things that we can do to improve on that? Yes, ma'am, and yes, sir, there is. And we will work on that. But Rome wasn't built in a day, but you can tear it down in a day. Moving on, we went in with 17 federal lawsuits laying on my desk. It took us three and a half years to get rid of those. I am happy to say, as of tonight, we are lawsuit free at the Coffee County Sheriff's Department after many, many years. Each one of those lawsuits cost you a minimum of $20,000 to answer. We don't need lawsuits. We've changed our work ethic in that jail. We've turned that thing around. We've got a work FTO program in that jail so much that TCI says it is amazing what y'all get done with what you've got. We do more with less. You've heard me say that. We're going to continue to do that. I'm very proud of that work. And what I'm really proud of is the work that our team that has assembled is to manage your tax dollars. Manage your tax dollars. As of June 30th, we're well on our way, and if Ms. Green has showed me her numbers correctly, and generally she's not off because we have perfect audits, have perfect audits. $1.3 million good to this budget, ladies and gentlemen. That's never been done in the history, the history of this department, and I'm very proud of that. Thank you. We are, we are going to... We are going to continue to keep you safe. I'm very proud of the drug work that we've done. I'm very proud of the work that our detectives have done. They're very hard workers. They're dragging stolen property in every day. They've been out all this week. I can't imagine to how I can explain to you the stolen property that they've brought in this week and help the victims. Help the victims of crime. 
And we're going to continue to do that. And I ask you for your vote. Thank you. All right, we have a, some questions that were submitted by our listening audience. We will start at this end of the table with Chair Parton and work our way back that way. Here's question number one. You will have two minutes to answer this question. Jerry has a question for all three candidates, so the same question will go all the way down the table. I will repeat it if you need me to. Do you consider yourself a constitutional sheriff candidate or not? Would you allow Coffee County to be a sanctuary county if the federal government was trying to implement policies that were unconstitutional? Yes, I am very uh, involved as being a constitutional sheriff. Now, a lot of folks have asked me if I would sign in to the Constitutional Sheriff's Association. Folks, I try to keep my name out of a lot of stuff. And when you start causing uh, waves and start poking your head up, the federal government has to come down here and nose into us. We don't want to be bothered, ladies and gentlemen but I am a constitutional sheriff. I stood right out there at the county mayor's office and supported the uh, 2A amendment and resolution that we sent to Nashville to leave us alone. I, I own guns. A whole bunch of people in this county own guns. I very seldom carry one, even at work. I have to dig around in my truck seat to find it a lot of times. They make fun of me a lot, but I am a pro 2A person. I am a constitutionalist. I believe in our constitution. I swore to that constitution, and I swore to the Tennessee constitution. We're going to continue to do that. If there's going to, is there going to be safety needed for uh, invasion of the federal government? I'm your last line of hope. Your sheriff is the last line of your defense of your freedoms. And I believe in your freedoms. I believe in my freedoms. And we're going to stand together if we have those problems. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> That was Sheriff Parton. Uh, Danny, same question. Would you like me to repeat that? Please, sir. Do you consider yourself a constitutional sheriff candidate or not? Would you allow Coffee County to be a sanctuary county if the federal government was trying to implement policies that were unconstitutional? Uh, most definitely constitutional. I, I've got guns all through my house that I've raised my boys on, how to hunt and fish. Several people in this room that I've hunted and fished with. Um, uh, that's one of the rights the Constitution to give us, and I'm not going to buck from that. Thank you. That was Danny Farrell. Brandon Tomberlin, you have uh, the question. Would you like me to repeat that? No, sir. No, okay. sir. I got it. Uh, I've had a lot of conversation on the campaign trail about uh, the Constitution and, and whether or not I would uphold the Constitution. And, and I will take an oath to uphold that Constitution, and I will fight with you to defend it. I, I, I have guns myself, and I know where every one of them are. Um, I enjoyed spending time in the past weekend or so at the NRA banquet. I support those kind of events, and I support your rights, and I will always defend the Constitution, or I will be there to fight with you for it. Thank you. Thank you. That was Brandon Tomberlin. Uh, next question, and we'll start back with you, Brandon. Sue in Hillsboro has this question, and this will be for all three candidates again as we go down the row. With mental health being an obvious challenge today, what are you doing to better, what do you do or plan to do to better prepare your officers to detect a mental health crisis incident? And how are they being trained to effectively and compassionately de-escalate such occurrences? How do you see police work altering to address this? So to ignore the mental health issue in our community is, would be negligent. Uh, mental health, uh, I, I want to work with mental health professionals to find the best solutions in these inst instances. Uh, I, I've been working and talking with officers from around the state, uh, even some uh, sheriffs from around the state, about programs that are currently in place. And those are co-responder programs. That is where a mental health professional actually works with the uh, sheriff's department or police agency, and they are there in real time ready to respond to those incidents with those uh, officers or deputies. It is a valuable tool, a valuable asset uh, to an agency to have that professional there 
at real time, on the scene, and folks, it also cuts down on, on time. I mean, if we, can, if we can take a mental health professional with us to respond to these scenes, we don't have to load them up in the back seat of a police car, handcuff them and load them up in the back seat of a police car, transport them to the hospital where they sit for four to five hours waiting on crisis team to come do their evaluation and then find them a bed. These folks can come right to the scene and do that evaluation and make the decision right then what needs to happen. And I'm all about looking at new ideas and focusing on, on those issues and fixing these problems. Thank you. Thank you. That was Brandon Tarberlin. Um, Mr. Farrell, you have the same question. Would you like me to repeat that? No, sir. I'm good. Mental health, health is a growing issue across this United States. Uh, we see it every day on the news, some form or fashion of it. Uh, and I'm going to use Warren County Sheriff's Department. I know that they have a mental health person there when their inmates are brought in and arrested if we think they're having a mental health problem. They sit and talk with them to help us along with that. Uh, I know with uh, Sheriff Parton, uh, we take several mental health trips a night. I, I don't know how his is wound up, but we're taking three or four a night to different variations within the state of Tennessee. Mental health is a very growing problem, but it's something as a whole that we're all going to have to address, just not the Sheriff's Department, to get it to work. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was Danny Farrell. Uh, Sheriff Parton, same question. Would you like me to repeat that? No, thank you, Rob. So in Hillsburg, thank you, because mental health is a major problem in our field. Uh, we've got to work on and keep pushing with our state legislators to, to create more laws and more buffers to stop the criminalization of the mentally ill. Your jail out here is full of mentally ill people. What happened is years ago, the state of Tennessee in its infinite wisdom shut down hundreds of mental health facility beds. What that done is that crammed these folks into local jails in all 95 counties. It is sad. I've, I've had been in multiple meetings with our local police departments, you know, trying to work with them, trying to work with the hospitals, and we've got to train our medical professionals about this. You know, folks, they come into the ERs every night. You can go to either ER in this county, and you can see folks in there with a lot of mental illness, and they self-diagnose themselves and self-medicate themselves, sometimes with street legal or street narcotics, illegal narcotics. We've got to work with them. I've had the commissioner of mental health and, uh, uh, in, a, in my office in the first few months after I took office at the sheriff's department. And we sat and talked about selling the county jail to the state of Tennessee for a mental health regional reception center. Now I know that's hard for you to grasp, but we wanted to, in the big picture, to look at the three grand divisions of a diversion center and we would go out there and volunteer to give up our jail to do that and go out on 55 where our jail should have been built to begin with and build a new facility and a justice center together that we need. But that's another topic for another day. But I have had, I, I've been on the legislative committee for the Sheriff's Association. I was involved in getting the law passed. We're one of the few states in the 50 states where the sheriffs now get to contract with a private, facility, a private uh, transporter to ease the pain of the mentally ill being transported to these facilities. They get loaded up and put in the back seat of cage patrol cars. It is traumatic, very traumatic. And we have tried to ease that, ease that burden. And we, I'm very glad that I was involved in that and that Governor Lee helped us with that and gave us grant money. Uh, we've been a recipient of over $100,000 for the last two years to do mental health transports. Thank you. Thank you, that was Sheriff Parton. Uh, this round has three different questions, or a different question for each candidate. We'll start with Sheriff Parton. This question comes to us from Barry in Coffee County. Your primary opponent in the spring Republican primary was Alethea Ron. She worked for the Sheriff's Department as an SRO. She recently left your department and now works for the city of Manchester. Alethea has stated on social media that she was punished for running for sheriff. She stated that she took away her filing in the Coffee County High School and took away, took away from her being a participant on the SWAT team. How do you respond to those claims? Well, it's just like everything you get in today's time with social media and keyboard warriors. That is a bunch of horse hockey. I went above and beyond. That's all right. Calm down. 
I went above and beyond to take care of my friend Alithia Ron, and, and she's 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 hurt. She got beat. These campaigns hurt. It it it, it puts a lot of burden between us and these candidates. I've known these gentlemen here for many years. I know a lot of you in this room, and and we we went above and beyond. But the thing is, what what they what this question is 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 not addressing is, you need to ask how long Alithia was off work on FMLA. She was off for a long time. We did not mistreat her. We did everything by the book, for the book, and as a matter of fact, a lot of people expected me to fire her. I've lived through those days. Uh-uh. You don't do that. I have no reason to fire her. And you can ask all these employees I got in here tonight, if there's any one person in here, I made a full directive. She is one of us. She's our little sister, and we're going to take care of her, and she's still my little sister, and I know she's hurt because she got beat. Thank you. That was uh, Sheriff Chad Parton. Uh, Mr. Farrell, Brandon, and not that Brandon, different Brandon. <laughs> it's not you. A listener named Brandon says that you stated in your reasoning for running for sheriff that you would like to bring true conservative leadership to the county. Brandon wants to know why you're running as an independent and not a Republican. I was posed for that question tonight because I knew it was coming. Uh, you can ask Mr. Peterson eight years ago when I announced I was running as an independent then too. Um, uh, my fault is, is I vote for the person and not the party. So if that hurts me, that hurts me, but I vote for the person, not the party. I can be very conservative and work with anybody in this room to accomplish a goal, and that's what's best for Coffee County. Thank you. Thank you. That was uh, Mr. Farrell, candidate for Coffee County Sheriff. Mr. Tomberlin, this question comes to you, uh, comes to us from Amy in Manchester. Uh, if elected, do you intend to reverse the decision about allowing Manchester Police Department to remotely view interviews with inmates at the Coffee County Jail? Sheriff Parton stopped the city's access to those videos due to a lawsuit brought against the city police alleging breaches of confidentiality after a video was allegedly posted on social media. Maybe a trick question. So that right now this is in litigation. I can't discuss the facts of this or, or um, any details of what's going on. Uh, I, I, it's unfortunate this was a question that was asked, and that's, that's why I just met with the sheriff and told him I'm not going to uh, expand on this um, other than if it is allowed to be put back in agencies, it will come with uh, adequate training for the officers that have access to it to use it. I've never had access to it. I can't speak on um, how it was set up or who set it up, but adequate training is necessary, and I will not speak of the details of this suit. Thank you. Thank you. That was Brandon Tomberlin. All right, uh, next question, and we'll start with you, Brandon. Uh, this question is simple. Brenda wants to know why are you running for sheriff? That's a great one. <laughs> So, so um, I, I grew up in this community, and I love this community. Um, I, I have a vision for the Sheriff's Department uh, to uh, connect with the community through transparency, accountability, public safety. I have ideas for the SRO reform. And, and at the end of the day, one of my biggest goals is community involvement and building public trust. And that's going to take us all. That's going to take us all interacting with one another, talking about issues we're facing within our communities, and having the, having the time and making the time to sit down and discuss those. One of the things that um, somewhat disappoints me is that there is no bi-weekly meeting between agency heads, law enforcement agency heads in this county. D day one, that's going to start happening. We're going to sit down at a table and we're going to talk about the things that are going on in these communities, in Manchester, in Tullahoma, and in, the, in, in rural Coffee County. We can work together so much better. 
We've got resources. Tullahoma's got resources. The Sheriff's Department here has resources. And they have high, each one of them have highly dedicated and trained personnel. But sometimes it just takes coming together and working out our differences and, and making a better, safer community for the public. You know, I, 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 one, one of my, one reason I have a commitment to, to lead the Sheriff's Department or a desire to lead the Sheriff's Department is that community involvement. That goes back to uh, 2013, my family lost its home to a fire. And I was surrounded by this community. My children had clothes and toothbrushes before the flames were out. And we persevered through that. I told my wife that night in bed, I said, I will never leave this county, I love it. The people that showed up and the hearts and minds that were there to help us through that hard time, I wanna lead this county and this sheriff's department in a way that we are here to help you and each and every citizen of this county. Thank you. Thank you, that was Brandon Tomberlin, candidate for Coffee County Sheriff. Uh, Mr. Farrell, uh, same question, would you like me to repeat that? Please, sir. Brenda wants to know why you're running for sheriff. Okay, well, Miss Brenda, I'm glad you asked that. I've worked at the Sheriff's Department for over 20 years. I've got over 30 years of experience through different Sheriff's Department. It's something that I've always wanted to do. I am a second generation police officer. My father was a cop in Tullahoma before he went to Collinwood as the chief of police there for several years. Then we moved back to uh, Coffee County, Bedford County line where I worked on a farm, milking cows from nine years old up to I was right at 21 years of old to when I went into security, private security, worked that until I got hired on at the Sheriff's Department and put through the academy. As Sheriff Parton said earlier, I've been through a department that put me through the academy where a new sheriff come in and he went at midnight, he fired us all but one. I come home then, that was over 20 years ago at Coffee County. Uh, anybody that knows me know that I, I'm hardworking and I'm always trying to do the best for the community and, and take care of my cases. Um, uh, this, is, this is a goal I've had for a while uh, I, like I said, I was going to run eight years ago, but I couldn't run against a man that I've worked for for 20 years. Uh, and I appreciate your vote. Thank you. That was Danny Farrell, candidate for sheriff. Uh, sheriff Parton, same question. Would you like me to repeat it? No. Um, I, I'm, I've answered this, I think, once before in a previous um, debate. I wonder sometimes why I, why I do this job. Why I put my family through this? Why we run for office and put our families through this and we lose friendships with classmates and friends that we've been to socialize with? It, it hurts, folks. Y'all have no idea in our law enforcement family the, the tension that we have. But when I sit right here and I look out in this audience, for those of you that are watching um, on Facebook or whatever media you're on tonight, if you could turn those cameras around and you see my employees that's got this room filled, that's why I'm running again, and that's why I'll continue to run. I, I, I don't have to have this job, folks. I do it because it's a challenge. I do it because I spent my life up there since I was 19 year old. I know every aspect of it, and there's, I'll tell these new corrections officers, there's not a trick in the book that we don't know. We do it. I do it for them. I do it for you, the citizens. I do it because hopefully we get those calls of saying, thank you, you saved my life. You locked me up and you dried me out. You saved my life. Thank you. You solved that child abuse case. Thank you. You got my stolen property back. Thank you. You found my family member's killer. And you put them away forever. That's why I'm running for sheriff. You can fight about budgets. You can fight about SROs. You can fight all that. That's what it boils down to is my law enforcement family that's right here with me. And we're going to fight through this to the end and we're gonna fight for you, the citizens of this county, for doing what's right. Are we perfect? No. We mess up every day. But folks, you're very blessed to live in a county that you live in because I meet with all other 94 sheriffs once a month and you ought to hear the horror stories. We don't have any drama in this county. We live in a good, good county. And we've got good police officers at both of our police departments. And I agree with Mr. Brandon, or Tomlin. We're, we're going we're gonna to have to work back through this and get back together. I agree with that. And, Danny, 
has done a very good job and has been a hard-working, honest deputy sheriff loyal to these people, and I agree with that. That's why we're running. We each have different ideas and opinions, but at the end of the day, it's for you. Thank you. All right, this is our last question, and uh, you will have uh, time for a closing statement after we go through this. We'll start with Sheriff Parton. Do you believe the Sheriff's Department is in better shape now than it was four years ago? Why and why not? And how do you envision improvement over the next four years if you are reelected sheriff? You know, I want to say we're like BSAF. We, we, we took a product and we made it better. I wanted to build upon what Steve Graves, Sheriff Graves, left us. I didn't want to go in and tear that down. If I wanted to tear it down, I would have fired everybody out there and we'd start it all over again. But you can't do that in modern times. There was no reason for it because you had good, dedicated employees out there. We just had to tweak it. We had to tweak issues in that jail. We had to get these lawsuits under control. We had to get this budget under control. And I, as sheriff, had to stand up before that county commission and fight for my people's pay. And I'm going to continue to do it, and I'm going to fight for their insurance. I've got to. That's my responsibility. I'm happy to say I don't know what more I can do of crunching pennies out there. So much that that fund balance out here at the county commission, that's where your fund balance, it's you're so padding, laying on like a, a Pili Postropedic mattress, come from the sheriff's office. <laughs> that come from the sheriff's department. There's no other department, no school system, nobody that's, that's been under budget millions of dollars, period. And I'm very happy about that. I'm very proud of the, about that. I'm very proud of the crimes that we have solved. Very proud of that. I'm very proud of the young men and women that I've got. I've got the probably average age at that sheriff's office out there, if you combine nearly all 140 employees out there, is around 25 years old, 26 maybe. I'm the, me and Captain Butler and Chief Watkins, we're the old Mohicans out there. And I'm just a ripe age of 49. It, it's just the changing times. But what we're going to do moving forward, we're going to keep fighting for what we're doing and stay on the course. Last, last year when the auditors came, they had two days scheduled out. Two days scheduled out, state auditors sit down and go through our books and, and go through us like a fine-tooth comb. I went off and did other things. wasn't long. Miss Green's calling me saying, Sheriff, you need to come back to the jail. And I go, what's wrong? Auditors are done in a half day. That's how good your books are done out there. That's how good your books are done. I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of every one of these men and women that are out there. And for those of you out there working tonight at the jail, you hangs tough. We'll be back home. Thank you. Thank you. That was Sheriff Chad Parton. Uh, Mr. Farrell, would you like me to repeat that question, sir? Please, sir. All right. Um, do you believe the Sheriff's Department is in better shape now than it was four years ago? Why or why not? And how do you envision improvement over the next four years if you are elected sheriff? Well, I know the budget from the Sheriff's Department from 2018 to 2021-22 has rose $2 million. Uh, sheriff Parton has done good with everything that he's got. He's got these young deputies a, a raise, which that was big on my hit list. They have to have a raise. My other thing to do, as Sheriff Parton also addressed, is a benefits package. You can't have a family, a young family, paying anywhere from seven to seven hundred to a thousand dollars a month for insurance to cover for family coverage insurance. We as the people of Coffee County are going to have to do better than that and work together as a group to get that down so they can go live comfortably for their family and that provide for that family. I know times that the, the gas prices went up. I don't know about Sheriff Parton, but in, in Warren County, the, we've exceeded our gas bill by $30,000 already. I don't know about Coffee County. But there's always room for improvement and I will work with anybody to make those improvements. Anybody that sits in this room that knows me knows I will do that to benefit the citizens of Coffee County. Thank you, that was Danny Farrell. Mr. Tomlin, uh, same question. Would you like me to repeat that, sir? No, thank you. Thank you. 
so I would hope that after four years that we are in somewhat better shape. Uh, a, lot of that, a lot of that goes to progress made through technology and grants. A lot of this um, is a part of our county commissioners that get out and do a good job. Those county commissioners voted for those raises for those officers, and you guys and gals needed that extremely. But I made, I made a comment in this first debate, and I brought up this insurance issue, and I'll make a promise to you guys and gals right now. I will fight for you tooth and nail to get you better insurance benefits. It's that it, it is it is unacceptable. I mean, if if you folks, if the, if these if these men and women get their uh, the lowest possible insurance plan they can get right now, is uh, seven hundred and seventy nine dollars. That's for the worst plan that they can get for family coverage insurance. The best plan they can get for family coverage insurance is over fifteen hundred dollars a month. Now, to a lot of these uh, guys and gals, that's that's one paycheck a month going to cover their insurance cost. And we're asking them to provide us safety and, and, and come into work and, and be, be proud and happy of what they're doing. And they do it. They do it. But we owe it to them. Um, and I'll work with the county commission. I'm not going to go in there bullheaded and say this is going to happen, this is going to be done. I'll work with the folks that are there collectively. I'm not going to go in any office, any elected official's office, and try to bulldog my way through it or, or, or curse at them like, like it's been done in the past. I, I, I'm going to be here to respect those elected officials and their employees and, and, and fight for what's best for those employees and, and for the citizens as well. Um, there's there's uh, people I've talked to in and out of the jail that have concerns about the way that jail's ran. Um, now, th these are inmates that come out of the jail, but it, it was compared to um, uh, just deplorable conditions and... and a situation that was almost un unlivable. I understand they're in inmates, but they're human beings too, and we owe them um, a right to take care of them and provide them with conditions that are at least tolerable. Th thank you very much. Thank you, that's Brandon Tomlin. <laughs> Sheriff Parton, would you like 60 seconds to respond to any of that? Thank you, yes. I, I, I've got to disagree with Mr. Tomlin on that. Tonight, anybody wants to go to that jail tonight and take a walk through there and make a surprise visit, or any time you want to make a surprise visit to that jail, come on. You're not going to find a cleaner, nicer, healthier jail in this state. That, that $1.2 million kitchen you got out there with the jail built around it wins the award statewide. We are not running a Motel 6 out there. We're not running a Motel 6. We don't have no sugar, no salt, no Coca Colas, no Honey Buns, no Snickers bars. There, that place is like Quiet Mouse back there, and that's the way we're going to leave it. We got folks getting in there and coming out of there healthier than they were when they went in. They're losing weight. They're coming off their blood pressure medicine. They're coming off sodium medicines. They're coming out of there. That medical division out there is phenomenal, phenomenal, doing a great job. I welcome anybody to come to my jail and look at it any time, day of the week, you'll be impressed. Thank you. Mr. Tomerlin, you have 30 seconds to respond. Yes, sir, thank you. Um, so, so I, you know, I have to, to disagree on, on that. Um, I have talked to several folks in this community that have tried to reach out um, to the administration there, and it falls on deaf ears. They've tried to go in and have meetings and talks. I know churches are trying to get back into that jail. These rehab facilities and these rehab services that we have in our county cannot even get access to those jail inmates to provide them with the services that they need, the hope that they need, something to help them out. Um, and I will make sure that happens. And if you come to me, if you come to the jail needing me, you ask for Brandon. I'm going to be there for you, and I'm willing and ready to sit down and talk to you. Thank you, Mr. Tomlin. Uh, each candidate has 90 seconds for a closing statement. Brandon Tomlin, you are first. Well, I again want to thank everyone for coming out. Initially, I, did, I had identified several goals that I wanted to implement in the future of the Sheriff's Department. That being transparency, accountability, public safety, SRO reform, and community involvement. This has greatly expanded after conversations with the citizens of Coffee County and some of these employees here of the Sheriff's Department. Here are just a few. I will implement a leadership style that motivates and inspires employees. I will work to restart a DARE program in our schools. 
I will continue to meet and work with hospital administrators to discuss hospital safety and security for our health care workers. Through community involvement and transparency, I will quickly begin rebuilding public trust. I, I will treat not only the citizens of this county with dignity and respect they deserve, but also the other elected officials. I will repair relationships and rebuild unity with law enforcement agencies in this county to provide the citizens with the best public safety possible. I will continue to research the success of the work release programs and help inmates that qualify have jobs when they're released. It is imperative that whoever is your next sheriff work with our churches and our rehab services to get back into our jail and interacting with those inmates. Businessman Harry Gruland said, being a leader is more than just wanting to lead. Leaders have empathy for others and a keen ability to find the best in people, not the worst, but truly caring for others. I am Brandon Tomberlin, and I humbly ask for your vote. Thank you, Mr. Farrell. You have 90 seconds. I'm Danny Farrell. I'm, uh, I am a dedicated and dependable. I have a high standard of moral integrity. Treat people with respect as I want to be, be treated. I, have a high, I would uh, have a highly trained and experienced qualified to lead the Sheriff's Department by maintaining all these qualities and goals. We'll have a department recognized by the state of Tennessee and the citizens of Coffee County as being the best they have to serve and protect all of them. As said previously, uh, early voting starts tomorrow, July the 14th, July the 15th, excuse me, in the morning, and I humbly ask for your vote on August the 4th. Thank y'all very much. Thank you, Mr. Farrell. Sheriff Parton, you have 90 seconds. Well, thank you. I don't know what more I can say. We can go back and forth all night arguing and deb debating, and, and there, there is good topics that have been brought up. Um, like I said, we're not perfect. We've been through a lot. When I got elected four years ago, who would ever thought I'd had to go through this thing called COVID and have a jail with 400 inmates in it and trying to keep them healthy and safe. Folks, we did a great job there again. That goes to my medical staff and the corrections folks that have been dedicated, and they live through that every day. Every day we live through that, and I'm, I'm happy to say we never had one person hospitalized that I'm aware of over that COVID where a lot of prisons and a lot of jails had a lot of sick people. I've done the best that I can do, and I will keep fighting and digging. I'm not afraid to get dirty. We're county. We're not pavement cops. I'm a gravel roads back woods boy and that's where i live and that's where i'm going to run and we we the clock don't stop at four o'clock for us crime doesn't stop at four my folks work and they work day and night and i'm going to work right there with them till the day i can't do it anymore i appreciate every one of you being here tonight you you stuck with me you're loyal whoever comes out of this you be loyal to them they're going to have to have you because no sheriff can go out there to that jail by himself with 400 inmates and expect to feed them, medicate them, serve the civil process, take care of the courts, and patrol the roads of the Coffee County by itself. It's impossible. You've got to have these men and women right here. Every time you see these men and women, thank them. Thank them for the, the thankless job that they do every day. We're not pretty. We don't wear fancy shirts, and we don't have tea times. We work. That's what we do. I'm Chad Parton. I'm your sheriff. I want to be sheriff four more years. Thank you. All right, that was Sheriff Chad Parton. I want to thank our candidates all for coming out tonight. We're going to take a quick three-minute break, and next we'll have candidates for Manchester Alderman.
Welcome back to the Political Forum on Thunder Radio. We appreciate you joining us. Our next slate of candidates will be candidates for Manchester Alderman positions. We have several of the candidates here this evening when we call their name. We ask the candidate uh, come up to the front, grab a microphone. You will have four minutes to tell us all about yourself. Our first one uh, this evening is Julie Anderson. Hello. For anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Julie Anderson. Um, I'm a Southern Middle Tennessee native. I'm originally from Page High School, Williamson County, and then I moved to Rutherford County to go to college. I studied English and psychology there. Um, I met my ex-husband. I started a family, and then we moved to Manchester because we wanted to be somewhere with a slower pace where we could enjoy you know, our kids growing up. Um, I have to confess that when I first moved to Manchester, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to government because like most people, like many parents, I was just busy raising my family. Um, when I eventually did get a job at a public employment place, you know, I saw some things there that were a concern to me. Um, some management issues and some problems, and that's kind of what made me get interested and involved in government and what's going on. So since then, I've been paying attention. And, um, and since I've been paying attention, there are things that I feel like we could do a better job at. Um, and one of them is maybe communicating information and getting the public involved so we know what's going on. As residents of Manchester, we have two governments. You know, we have the county government to watch and we have the Manchester city government. And with all the separate committees, it can be really confusing and hard to keep track of what's going on. So part of what I'd like to do is make that easier. Um, I think that one example of some an instance in the past that I think maybe we could have done a little better communicating is whenever we had the spill at the Greenway by the Ninja Park, you know, and the 1.8 million gallons, and we know that's because a contractor, you know, had an issue out there. And that's nothing that was done on purpose, but still I think, well, is that something that the public would have liked to know about? You know, if you take your kids to the Greenway or you walk your dogs on the Greenway, it might have been information that you would have appreciated. So um, that's one area where I think I could, um, or we could work together to make it better. I think that we've got a field of diverse candidates this year with a lot of different experience and perspective um, to bring to this. And I'm excited about that. And I feel very honored to be up here with so many folks that have all this great experience. We've got folks who are serving now and serving as county commissioners too. Um, people who are serving on the PBA. I have not served on anything yet. I'm willing to. I put my name on the ballot. If you think that I would be a good representative for you, then I would be honored to have your vote and support. Um, I think that right now I'm currently working as a freelance marketing consultant and I most often worked in the media. And when I did that, I worked with the candidates and I always enjoyed that with their enthusiasm and their ideas, but I never really appreciated how much work and stress it is to be a candidate yourself. So this year I've had a lot of life going on. And if I have not had time to get around to you personally to speak to you, um, I wanna apologize for that. I wanna invite you to reach out to me now. If you have questions, you can reach out to me through Facebook. Um, or you can talk to me if you see me in an event or out, if you see me driving around with my stickers on, give me a honk and a wave. Um, I want to thank Thunder Radio for having this event. I think that we've got a great opportunity to elect some people that are going to look at the challenges that we're facing here and, um, and make some good progress. I think that with the growth that we've had recently, um, as a parent, you know, I'm concerned with how it's going to affect our schools and make sure we're planning for that. I think the sidewalks that we have are a great thing. I would like to see that continue. But again, my name is Julie Anderson. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for holding the event. And I would appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. That's Julie Anderson. David Bradley, if we could get you to come up to the stage. Uh, I would like to mention, go ahead. I would like to mention that there are eight candidates running for four. You, you'll vote for four. So four of the eight. Uh, Mr. Bradley, you have four minutes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my name
name's David Bradley. First of all, thank you for holding this forum. Uh, thank you for everybody who showed up in person and everybody listening on the radio. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in information technology. Uh, I've spent the last 25 years in the technology sector um, helping cities, just like Manchester, uh, use technology to solve problems, increase efficiency, and that's one of the many things that I think that I bring to the table that I want to do for the city of Manchester. Um, I've lived here 15 years. Uh, this is one of, you know, a great community that um, when I came to town, I was immediately embraced by people here. Um, we have a small town feel that I think that we will always hold on to, even though we're growing. And that growth um, has to be nurtured for it to be the right kind of growth. Um, so in, you know, in regards to that, uh, I think it's very important that whoever we elect this cycle and the next election, that we're prepared to embrace that growth but also prepare for it in a way that will channel it in the, the right direction. Um, on that, uh, what I would like to see happen, um, what I'm going to work forward to as an alderman, um, are a couple areas, efficiency being one of the primary ones. Um, again, I bring my background in the technology industry um, to help us improve operations in areas that are outdated because as we grow those systems that are in place now that may have worked in the past won't as we as we get bigger uh, the other is transparency as it's been mentioned the city's got to do a better job of telling the citizens what they're doing uh, when we do a good job as a city we should let people know uh, when we do a bad job as a city we should let people know we should acknowledge it uh, tell, tell the citizens what we've learned from it, what we're going to do to make it not happen again, and move on. Um, the other area is proactiveness. We, we have to be more proactive and less reactive to um, the issues that we're encountering. As we grow, uh, it's very important that we have a roadmap. The economic, the Greater Manchester Economic Development Board is a perfect example. They're doing great things to try to put together a unified plan uh, for marketing our town and helping us grow the local economy. Um, the city needs to, um, and I feel that the city has embraced it, but it really hasn't been talked about as much. Um, I want to see more of that. Um, I want to see more coordination between tourism, economic development. Um, so, like I said, we, we have a wonderful community and we've got a lot of opportunity in front of us. But we have to seize that opportunity. Um, opportunity doesn't come without hard work. Um, in, along those lines, uh, if you're interested in the politics of the city and how the government's run, they are, applications are open right now to serve on the various boards of the city. And if you wanna see change uh, and you want to see how the city runs, now's the time to do that. Uh, I think the website, the city website, has the citizen participation form where you can submit that. So I encourage anybody out there that is interested in the government running to, uh, to do that. Uh, I want to thank all the supporters um, that have, you know, helped me campaign, put up signs, wore T-shirts. I appreciate everybody who's out there in the community talking about the things that we want to do. Um, you know, lastly, uh, if you have questions for me, because I, I don't like that this is just a one-way conversation right now. Um, I like talking to people and getting feedback. So if you want to, if you have questions for me or you have ideas, we've got a uh, meet and greet at Bites of Europe next Thursday at 6 p.m. So again, thank you for uh, coming to the event and listening, and I appreciate your vote for Alderman. Thank you. That was David Bradley, candidate for Manchester Alderman. Helen DeBellis, please come to the stage.
you're listening on the radio, these are the candidates for Manchester Alderman. Each are given four minutes to tell us about themselves. Ms. Bellis, you can go anytime you're ready. Okay, thank you, Fender and the church for having us tonight. We've had a great turnout tonight, and thank you so much for coming out and supporting everyone. And I hope that anyone that's in the city, District 1 and District 2, we've been pounding the payment pretty heavy, and hopefully you've gotten one of these wonderful cards with a beautiful picture from 20 years ago. Not really. <laughs> so, but on that card, it gives you reasons of why I felt that I was qualified for this position. Um, I've been in banking for more than 40 years, uh, working in this area uh, for 40 years, but in the private sector in a bank for 30 and then 10 on my own. I have infrastructure and construction knowledge. Uh, I've served as a county commissioner, so I've got a little bit of a, a political experience. I've been a past member of the Arnold Community Council, so I've tried to bridge the AEDC, Tullahoma, and Coffee County. Um, I was one of the first graduates of the Coffee County Leadership and Progress programs. I am an originating and past director of CASA, which is a court-appointed special advocate. I'm a past member and president and director of the Chamber of Commerce. I've been personally involved in several things within the city. So those are just some of the reasons, but now I'm gonna go to my forum here to take up the rest of my four minutes. But for the last 30 days, I've been on the radio, I've done podcasts, I've done newspaper, and I've pounded the payment asking for your vote and your support. And emphasizing on my background in business and finance and the experience that I have that I feel qualifies me for your alderman. We're now down to the wire and early voting starts on Friday. So I'm going to bring things more to a personal note now because I've spent 30 years dedicating my time and effort to the development of Manchester and Coffee County because I care about the people and the community. For more than 30 years, you, the citizens of Manchester, had faith in me to help you with one of the most important events in your life, purchasing and financing a home, making sure that it was within your budget and to assure that you maintain the payments and the maintenance and still have a life outside of that payment and to deliver that trust in a timely manner. You had faith in me to tell you if this wasn't the time for you to have a mortgage right now and to direct you and how to get a mortgage and a home at a later time. The mortgage lending field is a very hard field and is governed by the government and it requires additional education and state certifications, especially if you're outside of the bank. As your alderman, you can trust that I will continue to ask the questions that need to be asked and not back down from a battle, to research what's needed to make a good decision for the benefit of the citizens and the city. I volunteered in the school system for 12 years, and I know the challenges of the teachers and the battles that they've had with population growth and overcrowding of classrooms. Our children are our future and finding a solution to help will be one of my main priorities. It's time for a change and I will work hand in hand with the mayor and other aldermen to resolve hard issues and have an open communication line with you, the citizens. I will communicate with MTAS when needed for advice and complete additional continuing education needed for this position. One of the greatest compliments that I've received from a past employer during an evaluation was, no matter how full I fill your cart, you will always get the job done on time and as I expected. I have faith in you. Back in time, a good friend of mine, the late Judge Rollins, told me that I have more tenacity than anyone he's ever known. Times are tough right now, and I realize that without that tenacity, I would not be where I am today. You, the people of Manchester, deserve a dedicated candidate to represent you that you have faith in and can trust. I am that tough candidate, and I will get you through those tough times, and I ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you. That's Helen DeBellis, candidate for Manchester 
Alderman. Joey Hobbs. Come on up to the hot seat. It might be. You have four minutes, sir. Thank you. Hi, my name is Joey Hobbs. I'm running for alderman. Um, I'd like to take a couple minutes and thank uh, Josh and Thunder and the venue for holding this. It was a good turnout. Uh, a lot of people have left. I hope everybody still uh, stay in tune to to hear the rest of us talk, right? The main ones seem to be over. Um, I'd also like to take a couple minutes to thank my family, my wife, Colette, uh, my kids, Brent and Brittany. Um, as some of the folks up here before have said, running any of these elections aren't easy, right? Um, there's a lot of shots taken, a lot of misinformation and a lot of those things, but um, it's okay. I mean, I put myself in that position, um, but my family, you know, uh, I just want to thank them. So um, on to, to, to what we're here for. So part of this, you know, I'm currently a county commissioner. Uh, I've served for, this is my first term. I've learned a lot um, about politics, about how things work. Um, and through that experience, I have fought for the employee of Coffee County, for the way of our life, and for the things that I personally hold dear to me. I, did, I was not born here. I was raised in uh, Florida. I moved here when I was 16 years old. Uh, I met Colette, uh, I guess, when I was 16, 17 years old. We've been married about 34 years, and this is a great place to raise kids. So part of my responsibility is, is how do we continue that so that as my kids grow, they want to stay here in this community. Part of that is, can they earn a wage? You know, what do we offer? Is there retail? I mean, both my kids currently drive to Nashville uh, back and forth. Uh, I hope that someday we have those type of opportunities here locally. Um, so that when I do have grandkids, I don't have to travel to see them. Um, part of the things that uh, I do think are important and then questions that have been asked of me is uh, consolidating schools. Uh, I'm not for consolidation. I'm for the city expanding what they currently have and maybe even offer a high school at some point. And by that, you actually work with the county, right? Thank you. I mean, the, the, that relieves some pressure from the county as well as the city. So there's lots of things that we don't work together on. Um, I am running for county commissioner as well for District 2. I know some of that's not popular to people and they don't understand why I want to do both. But there again, I mean, I feel that I have a duty to help try to solve some problems and be able to work together. We're not very good at that either. So I don't know how much time I have left and it's a little different, but I'd like to ask anybody here tonight if they have a question for me. Okay. Well, thank you. My name is Joey Hobbs. I ask for your vote as alderman. Uh, early voting starts tomorrow. And that's the last thing I want to say is, listen, there's nothing else you need to do. doesn't matter who you want to vote for. Just go vote, right? Turnout's been very bad. But these are important things. They're important races. So, again, my name is Joey Hobbs. I appreciate uh, anybody's support. Thank you. Thank you. That's Joey Hobbs. Candidate for Manchester Alderman. Mark Messick is up next. Do want to remind everybody again, if you are voting in the city, there are eight candidates. You will vote for four. Mark, you have four minutes, sir. Anybody that can't find a seat, I can direct you to an empty seat now. There's plenty out there. So I want to thank you guys. Y'all look pretty good dressed up. I'm impressed. I want to thank Steve for letting us do this here. I want to thank you people in the audience, and I want to thank the people listening at home as well. And the candidates, I want to thank them because Joey's right. It's pretty tough running for a, a position. And the candidates that we have this time, if any of them, it didn't matter who gets elected, Manchester's going to be in good hands. So, but a little bit about me. I think most of y'all know me. I grew up in a metropolis called Gossburg, and I've lived in Coffee County most all my life. I've uh, been a dairyman, a row crop farmer. 
I've worked at the co-op, and I've sold real estate for 25, 26 years. And I appreciate y'all letting me make a living in this county. I'm the only incumbent in this race, and that means that I've got a track record. And I mention that because I'm kind of proud of my track record. And when I say, and I'm apt to do this, but when I say that I did this or, or I helped do this or something, I want y'all to understand that I worked with five other aldermen and a mayor, and we worked together wonderfully this year, these last four years, and we've got some pretty neat things done for this city. And we'll run through them pretty quick. A couple that I'm really proud of. We added to College Street Elementary. We, developed, we brought forth the Manchester Economic Development Board, which is we developed to help bring retail to the city of Manchester. If y'all know, you've heard about the big grocery store coming. If we land that, and odds are fairly good that we will, then you can thank the Manchester Economic Development Board. I helped get the LED lighting for the city at no cost to the city, saves us about $4,000 a month. I'm working with the sewer, water and sewer board to upgrade our wastewater treatment facility to meet our needs for about the next 30 years. The, the project that I'm most proud of and I had most to do with are the sidewalks. We've got a $2.1 million budget to, put, to pour sidewalks, and, and we're starting on Hills Chapel. We plan to go to Madison, Coffee, Oakdale, and Oak Drive. And I hope when we get finished with the sidewalk project, we can turn around and, and do another one when we get this one over with because there's a need all over the city. No one should have to walk down the middle of the road, the side of the road, walk in the ditch to go to school, to go buy groceries, to go to the doctor. It just shouldn't happen. We need to to rearrange our priorities and let's do something for the people in Manchester. When I was elected four years ago, we was in pretty good financial shape, but in that time we have doubled our surplus and we didn't raise taxes. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud I had a part to do in that. We've still got other things to do. We've got to see the sewer expansion through and we've got to expand our school system because we've got about 27, 2800 new permits for new houses and it's going to hit us one of these days and we need to be proactive on that. If we're going to grow, we need room to grow and I support and I will work diligently to expand our sewer lines and rehab the water system to exit 105. I think that's an important project. I'm asking for your vote because I've had experience. I've been here four years. I've worked on several committees I see Rob's getting up, okay. <laughs> so I've worked to serve everyone in the city, not just a privileged few, and I've always voted for what I thought was the right thing to do for the city of Manchester. Voting starts tomorrow, everybody said that, go vote. Doesn't matter who you vote for, I'd like to see you vote for Mark Messick, but if you can't, go vote anyhow. It's really important. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. That's Mark Messick, candidate for Manchester City Alderman. Claude Morse, you are next, sir. Thank you, and you have four minutes. Thank you, <clears throat> and thank you for this opportunity. I uh, appreciate it being the folks here and the folks listening on the radio. I'm Claude Morse. Um, like Mr. Hobbs, I'm a current sitting county commissioner. And uh, Mr. Hobbs, Helen DeBellis, current commissioner, and I started talking months ago about some of the issues we see where, and it was mentioned earlier in the mayor's debate, there hasn't been really good coordination between the city of Manchester and the county. Our county commission district, and Joey and I, there'll be two commissioners per district, or the uh, two of the candidates for that district, is inside the city limits of Manchester. So almost daily, but several times a week, I'll get calls about Hills Chapel Road, when we're gonna get a sidewalk, and or other things, and I figure, well, I'm a county commissioner, but let me get you the right person, and if they don't get tell you what you need to do, call me back and I'll help you. Um, I've lived here since 1989. I was stationed here in the early 70s at Arnold, lived in Manchester. 
back down Hills Chapel Road in the gravel uh, Forest Wood Drive in the A-frames when they're brand new. Um, when I retired from the Air Force, it was my dream to come back here. I came back and was a project manager at Arnold for another 20 years. I ran marketing and public relations for the center. Um, I'm also an AEDC fellow, the center's top award, and uh, past president of the Arnold Community Council. Um, involved in a lot of things in the community, including the honor flight. I'm chairman of the board of that group, but we take World War II and Korean War veterans to Washington, D.C. to see their war memorials. <clears throat> also, uh, wreaths across America. We're, we're putting wreaths on veterans' graves in 15 cemeteries this year. So I've been involved in the community. Um, I've, run, I've run for alderman before. I came in fourth when they were doing three. Um, ran for city mayor, and Lonnie Norman beat me. And that was after the debacle with the Coles and the TJ Maxx that didn't come here. Um, and then I got involved and helped a bunch of other people run for office in the mid-2014, uh, 2016 elections. Um, like I said, I'm a retired military officer. I'm used to uh, managing multi-million dollar budgets, uh, uh, justifying them, getting them passed, and then executing them. I've got uh, experience in leadership and management from the military and, and corporate life. And uh, I love Manchester. When I came back uh, in 1989, it kind of looked about the same. It hadn't grown much, but we're growing, folks. And uh, we need to plan for that. Uh, I helped get a strategic planning committee started for the county. I'm vice chairman of that group. Uh, that plan will be countywide, including the cities, so we have a controlled growth and make sure we have the assets we need as we grow. So um, most of my signs, if you've seen them, are going to say county commissioner because I'm running for both. Um, I would appreciate your vote. And again, we got a good group of candidates. I think uh, we're going to do well. Uh, Manchester and the county are opposed for growth. We just need to try and make that growth right and have the assets to handle it. Uh, everything from the county ambulance service to road, the sidewalks, sewer and water, and uh, the county and city need to work together on that more. So uh, haven't got out to everybody and knocking on doors. The heat kind of got to me like a lot of other folks. Um, but um, my telephone number's on the website, county website. Feel free to call me anytime. I had someone call me the other night at 9 o'clock, and we got off the phone at 11.30. So uh, I'm available to talk to people if they want to talk to me. Uh, Claude Morse again, retired military, retired from ADC, and uh, I would appreciate your vote for both positions. Thank you. Thank you, Claude. Claude Morse, candidate for Alderman. Donnie Parsley, get you up here, sir. And you have four minutes. Thank you. I would like to thank everybody for being here tonight. You know, I've just got a short, brief message, uh, so I'm going to let everybody get out of here because I know everybody's getting ready to leave or want to go. So let me just get where I can see you. My name's Donnie Parsley. I'm a candidate for Alderman for City of Manchester. I was born here. I was raised here. Uh, and I'm married to Susan Parsley, and we've raised her family here. I've owned uh, a business here for several years, operated RPM Glass Company, and worked for AEDC. Don't want to interrupt you, Mr. Parsley. Speak up just a little bit, okay? Oh, just a little okay. bit. And now, of course, I am retired, and I have more time to serve as far as in the capacity, as far as with all of you know, the only thing that I can say is I will work to make the city run efficiently and support the employees that work on the many city services. Uh, I want to also let everybody know that I support the Manchester City Schools wholeheartedly. Uh, we've got a great, great group of candidates out here tonight. The the only thing I can say is I'd work hard, and I will be honest with each one of you. And I'd like to thank and ask each, each and every one of you 
for your support and all the people that's helped me. And like Mark and all the other candidates said, just get out and vote. If you don't vote for me, vote for someone else. Thank you all. Thank you, Donnie. That's Donnie Parsley, candidate for Manchester Alderman. Uh, our last candidate is James Threat, who is not here. With that, Josh will close us out. All right. Thanks to everybody for coming out. Big thanks to Steve, the church. This is an excellent event center. If you guys have events that need to be done, y'all check with him. Uh, I'm sure he would be glad to help you out. If you missed part of uh, tonight's events, you can check our Facebook page, facebook.com. Search for Thunder Radio. You can watch, uh, you can watch it there. And uh, you can also catch a replay on our website, thunder1320.com. If you're listening on the radio, the Braves are leading 5-2. to two. We're going to send you to the Braves game next. Thanks for listening to Thunder Radio.